Good evening, everyone. Happy to be here with you tonight. And um, I hope I want to take you on a journey through the art of history and how um, artists have affected um, this moment in time. But before, I want somebody to tell me if you can hear me. Hi, Michael. And I think that's Doreen too. That's great. So happy you're here. Hi, Andy. <laughs> Hi, Verbi. Hi, everyone. Garnet, Isabel. And you can hear me. Thank you, Isabel. Okay, that's great. And Dessa. Nice to hear you. Goodness. Terrific. Thank you, Yvonne. Okay. What I want to start with is um, to talk about Advent this time of year. And I don't know what other countries are experiencing, but in England, this time of year, it starts to get darker and darker and the days get shorter and shorter of light and I know that um, throughout my life particularly when I first came here it was quite an experience because Dave was on tour or stuck working in the studio and English television unlike American television had only two channels, BBC One and BBC Two. And it only came on at three, four o'clock in the afternoon. Plus, David being a bachelor, single, he didn't have curtains on his windows. So the wind would come in and I'd sit there shivering because he had lead light windows and they let the wind in. <laughs> it was quite an experience, I have to say, of adjustment. And as time went on, and I became aware that there was something more than um, my daily life, and started to meditate and have a vision to touch something more inside myself, I became aware of a time in English history when the Celts would light bonfires and they would bring a gourd back with some coal in it, embers, and they would light their fires for the winter because it was like a symbol that um, it was important in the winter in the darkness, nature was helping us to discover the light within ourselves. That was the beginning of another journey of relationship with the light within myself. And it continues to expand. And I, I've come to realize that there are a lot of ceremonies in the history of many cultures that celebrate the light. And they know that it's um, important to touch the light within us. You know, there is a law of uh, rules that goes along with the light that is everywhere in us and outside of us that we can observe. It's like, if you get really angry or you're really upset or depressed or something, that takes away the energy of the light within us. And then also, if you're happy and you're in love and you see a wonderful flower or you succeeded in some creating something very special, it gives you light. We are part of the creation of the oneness it's always here 
and the big cosmos is with us showing us different um, cycles of um, to show us that we are one life is we're full of life and we have a choice <laughs> Hi Becky, hi Juliet, and yes, old English houses before curtains and double glazing, which actually I prefer not to have double glazing. I got used to the rhythm and the flow of, and the contact with nature. And then of course, one night I was sitting there on my own and this man came up to the window in the living room and I just jumped out of my seat. He had a black hat on and a big black coat and he's tapping on the window and it was like, oh, oh my God. And apparently all the water pipes were broken, frozen, and they were delivering a tank. So here I am in my stocking slippers, having to go outside to get water. That was fun. <laughs> And then the coal miners strike struck, how was that, went on strike. And all the shops had candle lights and in a way everyone talked to each other in a different way. So there's something special about life, it, depending on how you react to it and how you make it special. Yeah. I'm going to take my glasses off because there's a reflection. And I hope I can um, see your messages. I can't see your messages. <laughs> <I'll double. laughs> Hang on a minute. You've been writing something I better respond to. Verpi says it sounds like her house, an old stone house. Yeah, Julia. Open fire, candlelight, really special. So what I want to do, sometimes it's really interesting to know the cycles of things, particularly if you're an artist or if you're working on the art of um, living and bringing in that light and because we're supposed to radiate it and it's um, really important if we do that to harmony and balance and like I said last week it's like we need to be more attentive to each moment and be in the moment and instead of um, going along with the memories of the conditioning of what things should be and what we're going to talk about tonight is the historical um, viewpoint of what art supposed to be. Good morning Sharon, good morning Becky, or good afternoon Becky. <laughs> and Verbi says that the Scandinavian tradition is to celebrate Yule as the celebration of light and then it was kind of melt together with the German Christian habits. Yeah, and then there's Coca-Cola and Saint Nick that's done consumerism that started shifting it and then the anti god beliefs and then there's the eastern beliefs there's Diwali, the celebration in india and there's hanukkah and there are these ongoing traditions that celebrate the light hi Stu sue i see winter solstice. Yule was the kind of a solstice. But let me um, put on what I want to show you if I, do, if I push the right button. And I want to get back to the beginning and it's not at the beginning. How do I do that? Oh, wait a second. Okay, um, hurry, hurry, hurry. I'm, I'm going to start at the medieval 
period of art where the only way you could be an artist, because everything before that were to do with cave dwellings and the Egyptian period and, and everything, but I want to come into a more Western um, influence where artists could start making a living for art, for their creativity. And in the, they could only do it by doing um, work for the church. And it had to be really serious work, depiction of the Bible and things. But, and it wasn't just for the church. It was called the Gospel of the Commoners because people couldn't read. There weren't many books around. And if they could afford to get a book, it was every book was done by hand. So art, the artist taught or reflected the spiritual aspect, the Gospels of the Bible for the people. I never knew that before. But what I did know is that they had to be really serious and the church would... Um, let them go if, if they didn't do it seriously. And um, there came a time when the church was needing money because selling, what was it called, those little things that you could buy a card or relics. And therefore they weren't making enough money. So they started to allow the patrons to have their their um, portraits painted by their um, religious artists, thereby bringing in in bringing in um, money, funds, and things to keep the church going. Then what started to happen was that the artists started to bring in a bit of nature. So you see in some of the paintings, you'll see a lily or you'll see a window of a land showing a landscape or you'll um, what's another thing that would happen? oh yes the Madonna or the saint that was equally in these paintings would have higher longer dimensions taller and long fingers if you start to um, look at some of the art the medieval art, especially towards the end of that century. And I have to say that we're almost at the beginning of the slideshow. I haven't learned how to um, flip this back. So in the medieval period, they were, um, there wasn't much individuality in their uh, subject matter. Here we go. Yay. So here we have um, the Baroque and very detailed, very um, loving colors. That's um, Botticelli as um, during that period entering the Renaissance, the um, feminine body was being revealed in her blessed naturalness <laughs> this is by michelangelo so it was still see how they have the the landscape in the then it came that um artists wanted to make um imagery that would influence the government picasso did this to try to stop the um one of the spanish wars he got into a lot of trouble and then, of course, cu Cubism came because the artists started to think, well, I'm not going to do it the way that the medieval guild told us that we um, should do it that way. So here's a Van Gogh. So the different um, textures, different strokes started to come in. They started to allow their emotions to be shown. Um, and there's the Dada period that got really, really nasty in a way. This is um, Picasso. 
And then, of course, here we are. This is called the ready-made period, where Duchamp um, exhibited things um, of ordinary life used in a different context. And the latrine got um, quite a weird reaction. This is part of the Dada period, where you have Munch um, expressing his... Um, of course, there's wonderful Kadinsky who had anesthesia so that he would see his paintings as um, musical notes. He could hear music and a lot of his senses were blended together when he was painting. And then wonderful Klimt, who by that point, after the Cubism, they started playing with ge geometry and things, but they also started to have a deeper spiritual vision and um, some of them participated with the Theosophical Society and then of course came the Surrealists. I mean at the turn of the 20th century artists thought well we are entitled in a way to be res more responsible and paint a new vision for the future of how you look at art and therefore they all systems go and you'd have your apple on your front of your face and they felt the freedom to do whatever they wanted. That's Magritte. Never saw that one before. And then Monet began taking it even further into a um, the inner realms. I mean, Munch. He took a lot of psychedelics and it, he wanted to go into the unconscious. But this is Cecil Collins, my teacher. He was around during, with the Surrealists and he only painted angels and fools. The fool is clear perception and the angel is the purity of who we are. So instead of going into your individual personality, emotions, and psychology. Here he makes a statement where the angel dies. He said, we are so familiar with war, and what we don't know is the angelic aspect of who we are. So for me, this took me, this is my awakening, where just before you realize that there's something more to life this is my sort of social statement just after 9-11, it's called Hope. The mother and child, my painting in the background. This is heart to heart. This was my experiment of wetting the canvas and throwing on colors and seeing what happens doorway to the higher inner beauty and this is the garden of beauty which is me finding the garden in me and this is the angel of light so what I discovered in, in doing this is and it I reflected back on my time with Cecil and how he what he inspired all of us about um, touching that place inside and and the purpose of art would be to uplift and to create doorways so a lot of art up to that point if you go into the um, op art the conceptual art and the 20th century is known as the century of isms. There's lots, lots of things that um, people get, got up to because this freedom to discover, to release, to share. But it was all um, around the Industrial um, Revolution and the Depression and wars and we were as people going in and out and in a way we are in something like that now with COVID. 
we are being taken to realms within ourselves and our emotions and it would it's really lovely if artists could depict doorways so that you know create experiences when you watch look on artwork it takes you into who we really are that we and it brings you back to ground level to being a human being and it's um i think the 20th century the beginning of all this was was the waking up in a way to be released from a very confined box um, of belief systems and we have that and the the thing that is important like i mentioned last week about memories we can choose which memories we want to use so you look at the memory or your habit or your belief system do you have the courage to say is this serving me or how can i be the light with more within myself and within my actions and you can start little with a word of kindness or choose what you will do in a day that will brighten it and yes we'll have challenges and things we have to work through but um, there's a difference if you enter it with what is the highest spiritual way of dealing with this would be I am going to look at your messages because I've done a bit of chatting <laughs> Dessa is true. There is so much negativity now I sometimes forget the beauty. Well, I think as each of the cycles that I was depicting with um, the cycle of, of art in history, within ourselves, within consciousness, we're in a new one we're actually learning to integrate our consciousness into our ordinary life and find that balance in order to help the climate change to change um, how we use the planet actually how do we actually work with ourselves and um, I have to put my glasses back on I hope you don't mind the reflection because I really want to look at you. Julia says that so she's had a little wobble recently. However, I still feel I wish to create joy through my art for me and for everyone who visit, views it. That feels important to me to bring joy to everyone. We have to bring joy to ourselves too. It's like what do you have in your own personal view of yourself that you have um, judged yourself in some way or what expectations, what desires do you have that you can shift? And a lot of it is becoming aware of the fact that you are light. And there are laws, as I said, about light guiding laws that the moment you realize that um, you might be going down with the ship or having a wobble tune back in set up a daily practice of how to tune in start the day 10 minutes 15 minutes of starting the day in stillness because your soul your personality does respond to that and Julie, no, people don't tell you about the rules of light unless you're into mysticism. Then, or like when I was working with Lily Cornford in color therapy, she said, when 
mankind discovers and realize that they are energy, but more than just energy, that the, you are the light within. And you be, once you realize that you be it, you're not trying to do it. And that's what's happening right now for us all. And laws, so far as not that you'll be a bad girl if you don't follow the laws. It's not like that. It's, 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 it's like a process, a reality, just like the winter, the, the days get shorter. And the leaves drop off the trees and then it gets cold and all the energy of the plants and things go back into their bulbs and they go down under and the bears go and sleep and then suddenly little by little in the spring the energy starts to flower the leaves the buds the little tiny buds of the rhododendron start to come out again it cycles and the same thing is how do you react to those cycles and if you start to see the beauty of it in that the winter is meant for you to um, go inside and touch your light. Then life becomes different. And that's what the collective, I feel, is, is about right now. Our cycle is to bring heaven to earth, but through awakening inside of us first. And then to radiate out. Becky says she's 58 and maybe another 20 odd years of life left. I've decided to live, to please and look after myself. I'm not a conformer. I want to decide my own life. I choose to step out of the line. I know what you mean, but there's another path. And they, the Buddhists call it the Sangha. And that's, there are loads of beings there that choose to step out of the social consumerism and destruction and create life touch the beauty of who we are and if you close your eyes and in meditation they're all there going yeah girl go for it <laughs> Juliet says that she's been meditating more recently and reconnecting with my light and inner being. I have so much love within me, which I appreciate. It's a lovely feeling and learning to flow again. So go with it. Yes, Burpee, he's that song. And the truth doesn't lie. <laughs> And the other one that keeps going through my mind is, um, do you see me? Yeah, he comes up with some good lyrics, that young man. Yeah. We are more than just energy. And we are co-creators. And you know what's funny is that I was raised with a very Christian background and wanted to be a good girl. I tried very hard to be a good girl. And what I'm discovering is that if you um, seek joy, which you find within the light of your being, then what happens? You are a good person, you are a kind person, you are happy, happy. And it's, um, that's the key, is to find joy. Stefan has brought to our attention that the problem at the moment is we are changing the laws of nature through global warming. Mother Earth will make us pay a high price. She will always seek harmony it's the human beings that might not be here 
anymore. And it's our choice. We are to be the guardians, the caretakers, the co-creators. And we have to return to the basis of what is the beauty of life. And we have to be more simple. The Industrial Revolution brought on some really amazing things, but we didn't know how to learn to use it. On top of which, we don't know how to use what this being is in a creative way. We've allowed ourselves to be pulled along, to be on that um, assembly line that the Floyd depicted in their song, We Don't Need No Education. Francine, I think COVID actually is a huge hint. There is a um, Zen koan, forgive me if you've heard it before, but I constantly repeat it, is that at the beginning of school season, that the uh, Rishi would say to the um, students when the weather changes and we go into autumn, it starts to rain and you will be responsible for cleaning the mud in the corridors because every classroom or several classrooms were in huts and they were, you'd go outside to get to the next one. And so it started to happen. They would traipse through the corridors, they'd bring their mud in and then there's slush from the snow and they forgot that it was their responsibility to clean the floor. So he took them up in a bucket and he put it up against the side of the wall on the edge of the corridor and they just walked past it. And the next day they took, he took them up in a bucket and put it in the middle of the corridor and they walked around it. On the next day he put them up across the bucket and they stepped over it. And on the fourth day he took them up and hit them over the head and said, clean the floor. And in a way, I find that COVID is a hint. And the most important thing is there's lots of viewpoints, Becky, about it being a man-made disease or it's about human culling by the elite. I personally um, feel that there's a greater direction and that's where the laws of light come in. That if we're not working on being responsible for what we do in the day and what light you're emanating or what are you drawing away and taking away, then things like that happen whether it's man-made or it isn't, it's definitely a wake-up time for humanity. So, um, I would like to do a visualization with you at this moment and help you to align yourself to that beautiful light that's radiating from your heart. So if you would be so kind as to find a comfortable position while I shift the image.
on this stream. Julie, what are you um, talking about? You saw them but could not find them to purchase from my online store. Uh-oh. You guys, um, oh no. <laughs> well, I'm back. And obviously I didn't set up my microphone for that visualization. Well, thank you. It was really good. <laughs> I don't know whether it's going to be on the replay. Oh my God. Just when I thought I had it all down. Never mind. Um, what can I say? Which angel, Julie, were you talking about? I am so sorry. I always feel so bad when these things happen like that. Uh, well, I think um, what it'd be nice to do is um, to maybe do it again do you mind and I will look and see if I I didn't put in the um, in the um, microphone that you guys are so patient you could see me but you couldn't hear me. I am you. You are me. Okay, I think we should do it again. <laughs> and this time, I think you'll hear me. <laughs> so, is everyone up for doing that? Give me a, an indication if you want me, because... So, yeah, the sound is back. You enjoyed it anyway. Silence is good. This is true. <laughs> My small angels. Julie, maybe um, you give me your email and I can send you some choices. <laughs> oh, thank you, Stefan. I love you too. I love how you um, paint the beauty of the landscape all the time. You're inspiring me to go out and do that. Drew's reading my lips. <laughs> Therapy's up for it. Isabel's up for it. Absolutely, Juliet. Yes, from Stefan. Yes, from Yvonne. Laurie, you don't have any sound. Hmm. Everybody else has sound, so I don't know why you wouldn't have sound. 
Well, I would like to do it again so that it's a nice way for you to go into your evening. Um, the sound of silence. This is true, Doreen. Okay, let's begin. Here she comes, walking down the street. I believe you can hear me, but before I start, I'm going to ask you if you can hear me. Drew has no sound. Why don't you have sound? Drew has sound now. Okay, so Drew, you have sound with the angel. Lori's connection might be, yes, you can all hear. Good. Okay, let's start again. Let's be still and have a comfortable position. Close your eyes for a moment and allow the breath to gently enter, hold it and release. Breathe in the stillness, allow it to flow through your body and release. Breathe in the stillness, hold it and release. Open your eyes again and allow the light that travels through the angel to come within, purifying, harmonizing, relaxing. Breathe in the light and release. Breathe in and release. Breathe in and release. Ask the angels to show you the way to the light of your higher being. Allow you to radiate and uplift the world. Take the light to your heart center. What is it that your heart sees Allow the angelic light to heal the hurts and restore the love. Look again and allow the light to go into those hidden places and heal and restore and nurture. Breathe in the love and release. Allow the light and the love to fill your body Breathe in, hold it, and release. 
Breathe in, hold it, and release. Ask the question, how may I celebrate the light during this cycle? Be still and listen. How can I participate with the cycle of life, of light and love, and celebrate? Be still and listen. How can I make my life more full of light? So that each day my heart and my mind are open to the light, to grace. We are one within the light. And the light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste. I hope that was better <laughs> now that you could hear me. Stefan, that's really beautiful. I'm going to read that out. Stefan shared with us a quote from the Native American Apache Indian. It makes no difference as to the name of God, since love is the real God of all the world. And that's beautiful. Just wonderful. So wonderful people, another time has gone. And one thing that's come to me in my path is the 20th century in a way was the waking up from realizing that from the darkness there is light. And for me, what I'm working on within myself and within my art 
is that we know this and what our time is to do is to go from light to light to be a bright shining ball of light with happiness and beauty and love so thank you again and may this advent adventure that we're all on brings lots of light and happiness and um, as some group would say shine on <laughs> Love you lots and um, thank you. Have a good week and I have to put my glasses on because I can't see the letters. <laughs> well, I suppose you could say that um, it means I'm human <laughs> and hopefully full of light. <laughs> Thank you.